One of the things that, uh, that we're going to do our best at in both of our classes that will be upcoming is do our best to start on time. And then that way, uh, because you know what happens when we don't start on time, is that uh, people say, well, they don't get started till 10 past anyway. And then so that gives them another 10 minutes. You know, by the time we do it, you know, and so, hello. Go to the corner, please. No. <laughs> I could get fired with talking to the first lady. Yeah. No, but we, we uh, just to, and and when I when I say that, never not come because you are running late because life gets in the way sometimes. We have flat tires. We have sick kids. Uh, that type of thing. But uh, that's going to be our goal, is to just try to start on time, and you get here when you can. Uh, but uh, that's, that, that'll that be our goal, anyway. Um, I, I was uh, Dr. Parker, who was president at Marathon Better, that hired me back 45 years ago. When I became vice president, and I was representing the school with foundations and corporations and the trustees and all that, he said to me, um, uh, you, he talked like the Godfather, yeah. if you knew him. Uh, he said, uh, you represent God and the school and me. <laughs> if you are 15 minutes early anywhere, you're late. And that's, that was the way he oh, yeah. had it. Yeah. You know, he wanted us to be on time, you know. So I got that started geared in me, and I don't want him to <coughs> turn over his grave. So. <laughs> that's an honor of Dr. Parker. Okay, so we're going to be in Psalm 23 today. Uh, after we said, so you want to turn to that, and then I want to pray um, for rain. Somebody wrote rain, yeah. yeah. And they keep saying 70%. I mean, all the different ones. So Did it only rain on like Sunday? Yeah, I just hope it just rains and rains and rains and washes all that you know what away that's been falling off the trees. Yeah, yeah. So you know what that is. Yeah. That, don't, go there. don't go there. Don't tell them it's insect poop. Okay, I won't tell them it's insect poop. It's secretion. Yeah, it's secretion. Yeah, thank you. It's insect secretion. Hello, David. Yeah. Nice, nice job there. It's a good save. Um, and, and, and Mark, someone warn Mark, quit flirting with the girl back there. I want to warn you so you have time just to think about it. Um, before we get started on 23, um, I want to, uh, uh, Mark uh, was so gracious to teach 22 for us two weeks ago. Um, and so Mark, if, if you can give one of those two or three sentence deals about why do we even have, what was the, the essence of Psalm 22? What did you get out of it as the teacher? Thesis statement only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that you? Yeah, he's got it. He's already got it. I didn't even have to warn him, but I thought I would. Um, uh, because, uh, well, well, you'll see after after we do that. So whatever Mark says is going to be truth. That's all I know. I have that much confidence. In so let me open us in prayer, and then uh, we will uh, jump in feet first, okay? Father God, we love you. We thank you. And as always, I just stepped on David's foot. Sorry, David. Um, we love you, and we're thankful that we get to gather here. One of the names that we have on the board today is uh, Jehovah Shama. I wear that one out, but uh, you show up in, in your word and as we pray through Psalm 23, uh, it's your presence. Uh, you're here right now, and you were here before we got here, and you'll be where we're going before we get there. And we just thank you for your presence, Father. And as we think about uh, Don's, Don's nephew, his deployed, Michael, and he's right out in the midst of, of sort of what's going on over uh, with, with Korea and and that all the war games and so forth. And uh, so I just ask for his protection and protection of all those on his ship and that whole fleet, Father. Father, we continue to pray for Jeff's job, uh, Jehovah Jara, we mentioned on the board as well, our provider. Um, we continue to pray for Jean, Father, for her brother, for her children as they're expecting this new, new life. And, and we're just so thankful for that and look forward to it. Uh, Madison, Father Osborne. Um, Jehovah Rapha, our healer. We ask that as she continues to go through um, uh, therapy and treatment that uh, she, there will be improvement. Just 
however, whatever pace that you choose, Father. We continue praying for all of our first responders and their families uh, with um, all the drought and, and the fires and the emergencies and, and the things that they're responding to on a daily basis. Father, we, uh, Lenore, uh, that we got to spend time with here, um, uh, getting ready, Father, for a rehab center and just prepare her heart and them and just that it be a, a, a good transition, a smooth transition, Father. Father, for um, uh, Parker with his eight stitches, the Drake's grandson, Father, we pray for the healing uh, there and, and thank you that it was only eight and even though I know that was pretty traumatic for him. <coughs> Father, for Teresa, he, Jimmy's sister, uh, you, Jehovah, again, your peace, uh, we pray for your peace, shalom. We pray for your healing, uh, Rafa, Father. We just call on you on behalf of Teresa. Uh, Father, we continue to pray for all of our schools, and, and, and we want to keep being reminded of our seniors and those that are <clears throat> every day is a day closer for them to take that next big step in their life, Father, whatever they're going to be headed. And so be with our teachers and faculty and administrators and, and their families. And, and Father, we do pray, if it be your will, we'll get a good, good old rain. Uh, tomorrow, tonight, uh, whenever, and we'll be so thankful, Father, just for uh, just the new life that will come from that and just the cleansing that it will give to our community uh, with all the mess going on there with the aphids and et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, we're just going to trust you with, that, with all of that, Father. And I just thank you that uh, you're almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful God, uh, that we can trust you. And know that as we walk through our lessons each Sunday, uh, you're the one that's guiding us. You're the one, Father, who, uh, who gave us this beautiful word. And I pray that we will enjoy it this morning all together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. <coughs> Psalm 23. Probably one of the most... Uh, well, hello there, Sharon. Yeah. <coughs> Jacob. Like in the stash, man. I heard your mama. I heard your mama loves it. Yeah, I heard mom loves it. Now you're getting used to it. Yeah, when I reach puberty, I'm gonna grow one, but I don't want my voice changing and stuff when that goes along with that. Um, but we're gonna be in Psalm 23 today, and uh, um, I, I do want to mention real quick before we do that that you know last week we 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 put this on hold so we could talk in general about the Fosters and the Robinsons and the growth that God has given our class and the beautiful things about to happen uh, called reproduction and multiplication and uh, and uh, so uh, we're still massaging that list that we will share with you and we're still working with uh, Brother Bob, uh, Pastor Bob about the date, when that exact date, we just wanna make sure logistically we have the room set up uh, for that and if you weren't here, uh, one of them will tend to be a little older group, and one will tend to be the younger group, okay? So nobody get insulted if you're wondering if you're in the middle. Uh, <laughs> because uh, some, some of you guys sort of are, you know? It's, uh, you're either going to be the youngest of the old or the oldest of the young, one or the other. But, uh, but uh, the, the beauty of all of this is that God is sending people to Lakeview, and we want to be able to respond uh, to them. So... Um, not going to go through all that we talked about last time again, but uh, we're celebrating this. This is a celebration, and we're excited about it uh, as, as we go. So, Mark, what was, what do you so, see Psalm 22? What did you so, see? So last week, you know, we talked about Psalm and his David, and as I looked at uh, the scriptures, it's his prophecy of Jesus's death on the cross for each one of us, but. I highlighted this in, in my Bible, uh, Psalm 22, uh, verse 9 and verse 10, and it says, Yet you brought me out of the womb, you made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you, from my mother's womb you have been my God. And so, we have the picture of Jesus' death on the cross, crying out, Abba, Father. Uh, that should be our same cry mm -hmm. as we live life, as we go through the 
trials and tribulations. We know Jesus says we're going to have trials and tribulations. So to trust in my God, your God, with all our heart, mind, and soul. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Great job. I should have warned you, but thank you anyway. Um, and the reason I, I'd just like to jump off on that is um, that there is no reason for us to have a Psalm 23 if there wasn't a Psalm 22. Because the Psalm 22, as far as the Old Testament, is the most beautiful picture. It's a prayer and a prophecy. It's a prayer and a prophecy, and that is something that was happening, and it was something that was going to happen. And, uh, and it really depicts beautifully, as far as the Old Testament. There's also in Isaiah, we'll see that there are places, uh, of Jesus' uh, crucifixion in, in quite, quite a bit of detail. And so it foretold that it's, it, David was struggling with where he was. But because we have the psalmist that wrote Psalm 22 and, and all that has transpired since that time, then it, this makes Psalm 23 mean something. Because it also is a prayer and a prophecy as well. Okay? And uh, uh, like we're talking about, we're not doing all the psalms because we're not. We're, have, we're doing select psalms getting a representation of the different ones. Um, and remember too, one of the, when we set the table for this, the Psalms really uh, allow us to see every human emotion there is. Okay, remember? Name, name, me, name me a few just to remind me. Okay, what are some of the emotions that we might see that the Psalmist, whoever the different authors were, expressed to God in the Psalms? Joy. Joy, yes. yeah. Hmm? Sorrow. Sorrow. Anger. Anger. Remorse. Remorse. Fear. Fear. Praise. But, huh? Praise. Praise, absolutely. Desperation. Mm -hmm. um, just crying out. Trust. Trust. Mm -hmm. Love. <coughs> love. Mm -hmm. Lots of love. Blessings. Blessings. Um, the, the coaches I meet with, I got 16 guys that I meet with at Central Texas Christian School on Thursday mornings, and we're in the Psalms. And the name of the study is Call Out. It's just calling out to God. So much of this is calling out to God. Either calling out, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your loving kindness and, and your mercy and your grace and your love. And then some of it is, God, what is, why have you forsaken me? What is going on here? And the beauty of it all, guys, just a reminder, it's okay when you call out to God, no matter what your emotion is. He's not going to put it in here. This is his inspired word. He wants us to know that he, he already knows our heart, right? He already knows I'm angry. He already knows I'm fearful. I'm doubting. I'm lowering the snake's belly. He already knows it. So he wants me to know I can let him know that and trust him with it and that he is going to hear me and then he'll respond in the way he responds, whatever that is. Amen? And so as we, as we set the table here, um, so the psalm of the great shepherd, and I know in, in a minute, we'll, at the end, we're going to read about the good shepherd that Jesus talks about. But all the smart guys that I was talking about, uh, at the different times in psalms, he was the good shepherd. And, and then here they really highlight he's the great shepherd. And at another point in time, he's the chief shepherd. Uh, uh, there is no other shepherd or better shepherd. So we're getting this imagery, though, of a shepherd. And, and um, you know, as, as we look, tell me where have you heard Psalm 23 read or recited the most? Funerals. 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 Yeah, funerals. Appropriately so. That's, that's, that's a wonderful, beautiful psalm for that purpose. Please don't limit it to funerals. Yes, ma'am. I've seen it uh, when people are getting close to passing. Okay, when they're close to passing with hospice, right? Yeah, and the beauty that. Y'all have to escort them to the throne. As people are about to move from the shadows of this world into the light of glory. What a beautiful picture that is. Even though it can be raw as it can be, that's a beautiful, beautiful picture when you have that, uh, that assurance. And so, uh, but I want us to think of this as we look through it today, day to day, your life right now. Every one of us is at a different place, different things are going on. Um, it could be finances, it could be job situations, it could be relationships, it could be something physical going on in it, on us, emotionally going on in us, spiritually going on in us, 
uh, I, I don't know, we're all different. And God loves us right where we are, doesn't he? But he refuses to leave us there. He wants us always being restored and headed in his direction. And so that's what I want us to think about, to come away with Psalm 23 with a sort of a fresh thought of it, that this is a psalm I can go to no matter where I'm at, whatever's going on in my life, and he's going to, he's going to show us something today. Okay, so let's see if, if we agree with that at the end of, of, the, of the, the deal. So um, let me ask you another question. What, when did David write this? Was he a shepherd boy when he wrote this? Or was he an old king? Hmm? What do you think? Mark, you were lip thinking. I think in king. Yeah. Yeah, he was an old guy. He's looking back. Yeah. See, when he was a young shepherd boy, he didn't know all that he was, <coughs> was going to experience yet. I mean, he had seen some things that were pretty amazing, but he's now at the end of his life, and he's looking back, and he's being reminded of how awesome God was in redeeming him, saving him, loving him. Did David have a little bit that he could just, he could have been sitting in a corner, sort of like a defeated little tooth after all the stuff he, did he have some opportunities to just stay, get defeated and stay defeated? But what was he called later in his life? A man? After God's own heart. Whoa. Why? Why? What, what caused him to have that title? Because his behavior? Because no. he was restored. Because he was he restored. Because he had a contrite spirit. Because he owned it. Because he threw it in the light. And he dealt with it finally. And God redeemed him, restored him. And that's what he's in the business of doing. And that's the Old Testament. And we got Jesus. Mm -hmm. We got the cross and resurrection. And the Holy Spirit as we go. So... The table's set, I think, good enough. Here's where we're going to go. We're going to spend some time in the pasture. I don't know if y'all, any of y'all country folks, you're going to say, yeah. <laughs> get on your boots. We're going to be in the valley a little bit. We're going to be in the fold. We're going to be in the, at the Father's house. So uh, as we go through that, and each of these, these first three are going to deal with his sufficiency. One of the places it said adequacy, but you know, when I think of something that's adequate, it's sort of like it's okay, it's adequate, but it's sufficiency. Would you agree that he isn't just sufficient, he's more than sufficient? Yeah. Huh? Serenity, what does that mean? Peace. Peace, okay. So, can we use some peace sometimes? Mm -hmm. Certainty, assurance, not guessing, not chaos, eternity, okay? And I want us to be thinking of eternity in this way. Not after we're gone. If you're a believer, if you're in the flock of this shepherd, eternity, we're living eternity, right? We're part of eternity right now. Yeah. Now, we're not in glory. <laughs> Nothing that looks like glory here. But eternity has already begun. It's just that we're on this side of glory. And someday we will walk from the shadows to the light in the glory. So we're already, part, eternal life has already begun in our hearts. Woo. Now, last question before I keep saying I got one more question. Um, is he the shepherd for every person? This might sound like a trick question. Huh? If you're in his flock. Okay, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the shepherd if you're in his flock. Okay? You know, so so even though we would want to believe this or pray this for somebody that's not a believer, our, our real prayer needs to pray that they'll come into conviction and be drawn to him, you know, and, and give their heart to him, that they would be part of the flock. Because that the great the good shepherd, even Jesus, that we'll end with in a minute, he says, My sheep hear my voice. You don't hear his voice if you're not his. There's no conviction, there's no Holy Spirit to illuminate God's word. We can read the pages of the book, 
but it would make no sense. It would just be pages on a book. But once God gets a hold of us, it's still pages on a book. However, we understand that the Holy Spirit is illuminating that word to our, to our heart and spirit. And that's why it's a living word. That's why every time I read it, whew, I'm, in 73, the things I'm seeing now, how did I miss it when I was 33 and 43 and 53 and 63? How did I miss it? I don't know that I missed it as much as maybe he, I wasn't ready for it yet. He just now said, okay, Robinson, you can handle this now. Or I'm ready to bring some conviction. You've got to straighten up in that area. You've gotten a little prideful or you've gotten this or that. And there's times you need to take old Brother Charlie to the woodshed. Anybody else had to go to woodshed? <laughs> Not only one? You know, where that you go to that personal time and we're like David, we're crying out and we're repenting and and it's not just that we got caught because we love him so much. And we want to please him. We want to honor him. So Psalm twenty three. Now we're gonna read the the Psalm. I want I would like this read in two different versions. So whoever volunteers, tell me what version you have, and then if somebody else will read it in a different version. Uh, just before we jump off. So who will volunteer to read Psalm 23 for me? In what version? I will. Okay, what version? King James. King James, okay. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my, my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Who's got it in a different version that would read it? Yes, ma'am. Don? I've got ESV. Okay, ESV. Thank you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear, fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy <coughs> shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And you know what? We got time. Does somebody get another version that hasn't been read? Dave? Jehovah, oh, American Standard Version. Okay. Jehovah is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guideth me in a path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and loving kindness That's so shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will shall dwell in the house of the Lord, house of Jehovah forever. Forever. Thank you very much. Okay, so the Lord is my shepherd. What does that just say right off the bat? My shepherd. Me personally. Personal. It's, it's yeah, intimacy. It's my shepherd. Okay, I can know that he's your shepherd, but do I re realize that he's my shepherd? Uh, so it, it, it is that personal um, uh, Yahweh there's two ways of saying it Yahweh is the one shepherding me whoa most high God the Messiah is my shepherd God is my shepherd all of him yes sir no I think it's interesting and he uses the uses shepherd mm -hmm. you know and you know we as humans like to think that we're independent we're free thinkers we can take care of ourselves yada 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 but you know just looking at 
what we've seen here in America in the last few years, mob rule. Mm -hmm. That they, you know, we need a shepherd. We need someone to guide Amen. us. We need someone to look out for us. It's not like you're a, a cattle, a cattle guy with a bunch of cows. I mean, sheep are stupid and, and weak, they, and they smell bad. Yeah, <laughs> well, but, but the bottom line is, you know, we need we need somebody yes. to look out for us. Yeah. Using the phrase shepherd, using the concept of sheep and shepherd, is so appropriate. Absolutely. Uh, sheep, so you if any of you, if any of you ever raised sheep, oh, yeah. raised sheep. Okay. <laughs> anybody else? Like, I, I got a call one night that my sheep are on I-35. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they needed the shepherd. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody I've talked to with them said they're they're stubborn and you know thick skulled and all the things that sound just like us. Yeah. And and aren't really smart. Yes. I'm trying to remember who wrote it, but there's a little book, but it's called Psalms 23 from the point of view of a shepherd. Mm -hmm. It was written by a professional Good. shepherd. Yep. And when you read that, it is, I never knew sheep were that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I mean, really, yeah. you sit there, you read that and go, that's what, yeah. that's what this really means. Yes. Because it brought a whole new light to the, yes. the provision and the fact you did nothing of your own and if you survived, it was not because, you know. Yeah, that's Strong right. species, it was because of the shepherd. <laughs> so they, they are in need of constant care. They're in need of constant protection. Um, and that's what the shepherd does. But here's what the shepherd knows. The shepherd knows what the sheep need. He already knows what they need before they even recognize what they need. And so name, name three or four things that sheep need, the animal sheep need. Water. Water. Thank you. Protection. Protection. Food. Food. Guidance. Guidance. Running. And say so think about it. Back back in we're talking now shepherds back in the day. They weren't fenced in. Right. They just reckon if if you had all these sheep on a hill and two shepherds go out there and they start talking, the sheep recognize the voice, they know which one to go to. When we were in Ireland however long ago that was, and we look out there and we see these beautiful sheep and they got spray paint on them, red and blue and yellow and they're in different directions and we're, what? Because they didn't have shepherds, they had fences, but they had all these sheep mixed up, flocks of sheep mixed up and mine would be the red ones and blue ones this way and yours would be red and blue this way and yours has yellow down the stripe, the back or something. Back then that wasn't true. The shepherd was their all in all, their guide, their protection. Their, their, well, we're gonna we're gonna get to that right now, okay? <laughs> he said he makes me. One one version said he lets me. Another version might say he makes me lie down in green pastures. Why do you want to lay down in green pastures? To rest. To rest. Okay. So sheep need to rest, but they're not smart enough to know it sometimes. Yeah. Okay. What else? Huh? Okay, they need to eat, but I, I learned this. I'm old bodge, you guys. I must have fallen asleep in class when they talked about this 100 years ago. But in order for sheep to digest well, after they eat and they're full, they need to lie down for them to get the full strength and the benefit of the eating. But they're not smart enough to do that. You know, can you believe that sheep will just eat even though they're not hungry? Can you believe that an animal will do that? <laughs> you know, because we're the only animal that does that. Animals eat because they're hungry, most of them. And then they, they, they'll leave it and come back to another time once they're satisfied. But it's just there. I mean, those chocolate chip cookies are there. They need to be eaten, even though I am full of lasagna up to here. I gotta have fun with some milk, probably, you know. But but he makes them or lets them lie down in green pastures. He leads them beside quiet waters. What's the significance of the quiet waters? Because if they fall in, mm -hmm. that makes that they could get swept away, and their fur is or 
is very heavy anyway. and it gets full of water. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. So for their protection, mm -hmm. it needs to be, but also <clears throat> they get nervous and fearful of and moving water, water. Mm -hmm. you know, turbulent yeah. water. Yeah. And they're not, therefore they wouldn't, they need water and they're, they're afraid to get close. But if they got close and they fell in, it'd be harder to rescue them as well. So he wants to find clean water, pure, pure water that'll be good for them, but that's not making noise. So the shepherd has to really work hard to make sure he knows where the quiet waters are. There are streams that's healthy water <coughs> as well. And so uh, there's a whole lot that, that goes into that. Um, he restores my soul, starting on three. He restores my soul. What does that say to you? He restores my soul. It's, I'm a sheep talking to shepherd. He restores my soul. What's that saying? He's trying to he's okay. through turmoil. He's trying to he's trying to help me calm down and trust him and have peace in the midst of whatever is going on. Okay? Uh, the same word, verb. And these are smart guys. I, I get this from this, this guy that doesn't know this. But the same verb that's used here is the same is used for repentance. So what do you think that this is acknowledging about me, about man? Well, it's like, like God, you confess you confess your sins and then you're restored back into the fold, <laughs> that's right. so to speak. So unconfessed sin. You ever held on to something because you just enjoying being angry? You was enjoying hating on that person. I'm not gonna let them get away with them. I hate on them. Well, they're not playing golf. They're not even worried about you. And you're sitting there with a tummy ache, you know? Because I haven't repented. I hadn't said to the Lord, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and gentleness, and I'm everything opposite of that right now. I don't know what to do with it, Lord, but I confess it. I agree with you, and I need you, Prince of Peace, right now. Be peace in me. Because sometimes, in the flesh, <laughs> we started enjoying our sin, whatever that might be. I was talking with a brother yesterday, and we were talking about addictions. You know, we think about drugs, alcohol. It gets personal, man. Gluttony. Food. We joke about comfort food, but when that comfort food becomes unhealthy for us, but it does feel comfortable, it's almost like we're hiding behind that chocolate cake with the ice cream on the top and our favorite coffee. Yeah, I feel better now. And the Lord's saying, well, why didn't you just come to me? I'm, I'm the Prince of Peace. It's not a pie of peace. Or a, it is a piece of pie. <laughs> that wasn't even in my nose there. But, but you, get, you get what we're talking about. Whatever we're, we're going to when we need to go to the shepherd, we want to go to him to restore us, whatever that is, okay? He guides me in the paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. The paths of righteousness. What does that mean? Right road. Oh, the right path. Right way to live. You ever told your kids, man, I'm telling you, hang around with them, they're going to take you down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. Have any of you ever got to fork in the road and yep. took the wrong one? Yeah. Then you go, oops, <coughs> slap you. <laughs> then you got to go find your way back. Yeah, and, and praise the Lord, He's there waiting on you, to dust you off, and get you on the right path again. Mark. So I heard this, I don't know how many years ago, talking about the Great Shepherd and <coughs> staying on the right path. But sheep, some sheep have a tendency to wander. Maybe <laughs> we in our own life have wandered, but. He was talking about a shepherd's staff and the way that it's curved and, and not going to get into that, but there's reasons for that. We'll get to that soon. Okay. Yeah, man, no, go ahead. But, but a sheep that continues to wander off, <clears throat> the shepherd will break its leg, bring it back to camp, put anointing oil on it, wrap it, put it on its shoulders until it heals, and then that sheep will follow the shepherd mm -hmm. from then on. And if you think about our great shepherd, and how many times we've wandered, or I've wandered, and yet he brings me back all of what Charlie said, the mm -hmm. comfort, the sufficiency, the peace.
peace, the serenity. Amen. Thank you. Good point. That's exactly. This part is acknowledging us as fallen man. We need to be restored. And every time, whether it's a little bitty white lie that we didn't think hardly hurt anybody, it still put Jesus on the cross. Any unrighteousness needs to be confessed. And all confession, what does confession mean? To do what? To admit or to agree with God. He already knows it. You're not, not letting him in on a secret. He already knows. He's just waiting for you to agree with him that that was a yeah. bad thing to say or a bad thing to do. And then once that happens, he says in 1 John 1, 9, that he is faithful to forgive us. If we confess, he is faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, whatever that is, the little white lie or the big thing. But all of it put Jesus on the cross. So we want to be careful, too, in trying to categorize sin and compare our sin to someone else's sin. At least I didn't murder anybody or whatever, you know. Uh, the best illustration I ever saw of that was a guy that took a salt shaker and a pepper shaker. He said, think of, think of the sweetest, most wonderful person in the world, and he used Mother Teresa, all the babies that she saved, mm -hmm. you know. And he said, now let's think of the worst person, <coughs> Stalin or Hitler. They're, they're like so far apart. But if God appeared in his holiness right here, Shekinah glory, wham, just bring them together, you wouldn't even hardly tell the difference compared to him, compared to him. So let's just don't even get in the habit of comparing our sins and thinking that I'm better off than I thought I was because I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Shame, shame, talking to me, okay? Shame, shame. Okay, so... He restores my soul. He guides me on the paths of righteousness. The righteousness, again, being that good path. And we're talking repentance because he wants us. That path is that morally correct path. That path that brings honor to him. That's basically what it is. Am I on a path that brings honor to God? Or would I be ashamed if Jesus was standing right here with me? I hate to tell you, but Jehovah Shammah already there. And his spirit's already indwelling you. And so we can't play that game, but as humans, we try sometimes to play that game. You know, rationalization and justification and, and so forth, and, and it can't be. Our lives should reflect his character and his purposes. Everything we do and everything we say should reflect. We should be like the sun and the moon. The moon reflects the light of the sun except we're talking S-O-N, not S-U-N, and we want our lives to reflect the light of the sun, S-O-N, in everything that we do and everything we say. So, whoo, he restores my soul, and then he guides me on the right, to righteousness. And then, we're gonna, now we're moving into the valley, okay? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. I just want us to think about that, that valley of the shadow of death. And I want to share with you sort of what my homework did and the things that I had written down in my Bible some time ago. But uh, uh, Miss Linda shared with me the other day. She said, I'm excited about our lesson because God had revealed something to her that really ministered to her heart. So would you share what you shared with me? Well, I, it, this was the middle of the night, and we had just had a friend that passed. Mm -hmm. And it says in there, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, of death. It doesn't say we walk through the valley of death, it says we walk through the shadow. Mm -hmm. And it also says that we don't have to be afraid because Jesus is there with us and he is the light that is causing that shadow. He's the light causing that shadow. Yeah, that's a beautiful picture. Yeah. You can't have that. a shadow without light. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um, but, but also what they're referring to, as the good shepherd, is, great shepherd is taking the flock Taking y'all, we're heading, hey guys, we're, we're going to stop at whatever your favorite restaurant is, okay? Uh, we're going to stop at Cheese or Cheddar's or something. <laughs> and we're going to get your favorite <coughs> chicken and dumplings and palm bread or whatever. You're hungry. But we got to get there. <laughs> but to get there, we got to go through a bunch of traffic and tough part down and blah, 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 blah. But we're going to get there. When, as he's trying to get them to the pastures that are green, 
They're up higher. It's cooler. The grass is growing there. There's more rain there. But he's got to take them through the valley to get there. Because it's not just everywhere. There's probably one over here, and there's one over here, and there's one over here. And he has to take them through the rough, dry ravines, riverbeds, dried up canyons. And the, these canyons would cast a shadow as well. Hmm, predators, bad people, people that want to rob the sheep from the shepherd, people that are predators that just want to suffer, uh, want the sheep. And so, but they're not afraid. Why are they not afraid? The shepherd's there. Can you even remember, oh man, this is a mean thing to say. I know y'all y'all remember because y'all are also young. Do you remember being a kid and having a bad dream? I remember, I, I can remember one in particular time when I was a little guy and I, could, I actually called my dad. My dad, German, cowboy, marine. My dad's the baddest dude I ever knew. He's in glory now. He meddled. Janice cannot believe the stories they tell because he was his sweet grandpa. I mean, what time she know? And she had grand, eight grandbabies. He was tough, tough man. And he walked in that room, and the, and I was, I had seen a scary movie, and I had a bad dream, and I mean, I was, I was scared. I was seeing things in the shadows, man. He walks in that room, turns on the light. What's going on, boy? <laughs> Nothing, Dad. They're like, where you at now, Muster? You know, Dad's gonna beat you up. You know? Yeah. I said, I'm good, Dad. And, and so I was glad because I knew whatever it was was gone because he wasn't gonna stick around with Dad. Not my dad. Just think when we truly trust the shepherd. Because we're going to get to that rod and staff in a minute. And we're going to see what he does when he does that. And he says, I fear no evil. I fear no evil. It says fear at the beginning of that and comfort me at the end. And fear and comfort are really contrasting figures. But it's the comfort that's where he's taking me. And he says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. These are sticks. How do they comfort me? They're not pillows. They're not fluffy. What's the difference in a rod and a staff? Anybody know the difference? Okay, the crook is the staff. It's just, they're both sticks, but one is like a club. It'd be like me carrying around my little bill slugger, a wooden bat, you know, just daring somebody to jump out because it's going to knock their That's what they beat off the wild animals. Yeah, exactly. The rod was a weapon, and it was like a, a weapon, so for for protection. And and uh, uh, and they used it like a battering rod, and it was used. It was a tough, tough thing that they used it for, for protection, but also Mark already touched on it. It was also used for discipline. The same thing that protected them was used to discipline them. And he talked about the hardest part when they'd break the, break the leg if they had to. But he said, you know, one of the th guys said, when they take them to the green pastures, mostly it's good green grass, but you know what, those shepherds aren't too smart. And they see something, ooh, that looks good, and it's a poisonous plant. And if he eats that poisonous plant, guess what happens? Yeah. You'd be dead. Yeah, that's right. You'd die. And you know what he uses this rod for? Yeah. <laughs> Throw it at him. Chase it away from the poison. He'd use that to protect him from his own self. Protect him from predators. Protect him from robbers. But it was used. But it, it gave a sense of security. It, my shepherd's here, but my shepherd has something. Now the staff had the crook. So it was used for a different purpose. What was the staff used for? Pull them in. Hmm? Pull them in. Pull them in. If they got off the path, pull, just put it, hook them around the neck, pull them on in. <clears throat> what if one of them accidentally got dumb and fell in the water? Mm -hmm. Okay. Same thing. Same, same thing. <laughs> Even talked about how they, the, 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 the shepherd would lift up babies, little babies, and pull them up by the mamas. And, you know, they, the, the, the staff was always used for comfort and care and guidance. But it was two sticks. And that's why it says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I don't know about your parents, but I thought my mom had been in the kitchen too long when we were little. 
and she'd say, she's going to give us a whooping. <laughs> and she said, it's going to hurt me worse than it hurts you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, me and my brother looked at each other and said, Mom's been over the kitchen stove too long. She, you know, the biggest mistake we ever made was the time we laughed when she whipped us. Oh, yeah, you know what that meant? <laughs> that's the green chair the dad gets home. And Mom says, okay. That's fine. I said, turn you over to Dad. And me and my brother went, oh, bro, bro. we done made a mistake that day. Yeah, sometimes it really does hurt because I went to go whip Austin once with a belt, and he got out of the way, and the belt came around and hit me in the knuckle. <laughs> and it really did hurt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, still, boy, this is hurting me. I'm glad we have some documented deal. <laughs> and so, so the reality is that, you know, he, the, the sheep, the shepherd was everything to him. We're going to eat, we're going to rest, we're going to sleep, we're going to get good water, I'm going to be protected, everything. But the biggest thing was that he, he was there. He was there. One of the most beautiful things in the New Testament when he talked about his disciples, he said they were with him, him being Jesus. The disciples were with him. Whoa. He was in their presence, they were in his presence. We now have the Holy Spirit. Everybody in this room, if we're believers, we're brothers and sisters, he is with us right now. And you are never, not one person in here, you're going to have tough times. We still have flat tires. We still get betrayed. We still have losses in our life. Those things still happen. But we are never, ever, never, ever alone. It can't happen. Because you cannot withhold God from anywhere. At any time. Do y'all agree with that? Mm -hmm. So we just need that reminder. That's why I love this as a day to day passage or chapter for us. Remind yourself, don't wait till the funeral to read this one. Okay? All right. So then, uh, anything to add to that before we go to the next thing? All right. You prepare. Now we're in the fold. So tell me what the fold was. What was a fold? We're in the fold. What is a sheep fold? Where is that? It's like a gated area over there. Under the flock. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very safe place. It's where they slept. And remember, it's like a lot of times it'd just be stones, you know, stacked around. And and the, and as the sheep would come into the fold, this is where they're going to bed down tonight. Y'all you know, all coming in, and I'm checking your ears. I'm making sure you don't have any of those nose flies. That was gross. I read about that. <laughs> Those flies, they, they, they put worm, they lay worms in his nose. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not going to look at your nose, sir. Uh, so in the fold, it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. This table it has all kind of imagery. It's like the great banquet hall. We can think of that, great celebration of abundance. So, um, we can think of, of, of back in the day, that time when there was a big war, a battle, and they captured the enemy, that uh, the victors would sit at the table and eat as they just marched the captives by. They just marched them on by. And it was just a reminder that uh, God was with us in this victory. You know, that, that's sort of the picture that's, um, that's, that's part of that. Um, but the biggest thing was that God is with you, he is for you, but he also vindicates you before. In other words, Romans 8.31, I think, that says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Who can stand against you? No one. Uh -uh. And, what, and later it talks about what can separate you from the love of God. <clears throat> the whole list of things. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And so, and then right now, I just happen to be, I'm doing my, I got my, oh no! I didn't put my Fitbit on. That means no steps today. I got no steps today. So I don't have it on. It don't count. Steps Just put on. it on a paint checker when you get yeah. it. Yeah. Golly. We'll, we'll keep you in touch. Okay, thank you. Good night. So, oh, man. Just, My notes say that, that the meal is also... That just threw me off now. A, a, yeah. The meal is also a covenant. It's, yeah. you know, it used to be like yeah. a, kind yeah. of bringing yeah. together the covenant. Yeah, after absolutely. Something. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, so while I'm walking with my Fitbit... I listen. I don't have these either, but I have. I listen to books 
I've read all kind of book, audio books, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm listening to one that, by a guy named Louis Giglio, who used to be around a long time ago in college ministry, still around, still alive. But he's got a, a new book out. It's called Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. It's really good. Don't listen to it unless you want to go to the woodshed because it, he takes you there. But it's good. And he's using Psalm 23 sort of as his premise on the whole thing. Because sometimes the enemy, when we talk about the enemy, it's not a person, a captive that you beat. It is a sin that keeps revisiting. And whether it be lust, addiction, anger, jealousy, hatred, whatever, unforgiveness, when we, we give it a seat at our table, if we camp out there, if we sit there and dwell on it, and it does us no good whatsoever, instead of crucifying it, what it needs to be, it needs to be crucified, it needs to be, it's dead. I know who won the battle. I, I don't know about you guys, but I know how this book ends. I know, I've read the whole book, and I know how it ends, and God won, okay? We just need to live like it. And so, um, just throw that in there real quick. The anointed oil, yes. So, uh, maybe I'm going to step No, go ahead. Those. No, go ahead. The, this, this particular verse, the whole thing, uh, I read somewhere where shepherds put oil on the sheep's head mm -hmm. to keep the nose flies out and the parasites out and to keep the, 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 the sheep healthy. So, mm -hmm. And the whole idea is as, as Christians, when we're out in the world, we're in the presence of the enemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the blood of Jesus is our oil protecting us from, he says, you know, when the, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. So we're out in the world among our enemies, but the blood of Jesus is our oil mm -hmm. to protect us from those, if that makes any it sense. It makes sense. But just like being in the flock, to have him as a shepherd the shepherd leads we got to follow and we need to follow that when he brings that to our mind the greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world because that temptation will be there and it's only if we give it a seat at the table or we deal with that we may be more tempted uh, to act on it as we go that's thank you Nuss. that was very good appreciate that so he anointed their their heads with oil because he's caring for them. Sometimes their skin would get infected and this oil was like medicine for them. And it would keep the stuff away. And so as it goes. And then it says, my cup overflows. What does that mean? I have everything I need. Hmm? I have everything, everything I need. Everything that I need. Yeah. Not maybe everything I want. Everything I need. Okay? And overflows. What's this? Give me another word for overflowing. Abundance. Abundance. There you go. Abundance. Ephesians 3.20, Paul talks beautifully about how God answers prayer. Exceedingly, abundantly, beyond anything you can even imagine. You don't have the ability to even think at the level that God has the power and the desire to do. I, I can't even get my little brain around it. And so, again, remember... <coughs> That no matter how tough the situation is, sometimes we say, God, I know this is a biggie, you know. Or, yeah, somebody says, you know, I'll pray for your friend. Well, you don't know my friend. It's like the friend is greater than the power of the Holy Spirit and God and the authority of the word. No, it's not. But sometimes we can be so beaten down and tired and wore out with it that we feel that way. See? So we need some anointing ourselves. And, again, we have that. And so my cup overflows. Uh, just let him spill out all over the place. That's what happens. You know, uh, we talked about the enthusiasm. The root word is what? Anybody remember? Enthusiasm. <laughs> good try. Good try. Very good try, little joke. <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to laugh at people when they talk. Enthusiasm, that's good. Entheos. Entheos means God within. True enthusiasm is just God spilling out. The smile. It's, it's not rah-rah. It's not fake. It's just genuine passion that you have for the Lord. And it just spills out on people. You know, they might walk up and say, 
Foster, are you on drugs, man? You can, well, no, I'm not on drugs. He said, man, you just seem so high all the time. Said, well, I'm high on something. You want me to tell you what it is? Said, yeah, well, it's not a what, it's a who. Next thing you know, he's sharing the gospel with somebody. But, but again, it's not trying to act like anything. It's just him spilling out, overflowing, and that's what he's talking about it's here. It's genuine. It's genuine. That's genuine. Okay, so last thing as we close. Certainly goodness and faithfulness will follow me all the days of my life. And my dwelling will be in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Now, goodness uh, is another word here for pleasing and beneficial. If it's beneficial to the kingdom, if it's pleasing to God, then it's good. Okay, And, th and then faithfulness, because one of y'all in your version said loving kindness mm -hmm. was for faithfulness, but also mercy and steadfast love. Those are some other words that are used, used there. Follow me all, because the fruit of the Spirit will follow you. It will, you, you don't have to ask for the love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, and patience. He says, I am those things, and you have me. So you have those fruits. You ask for peace, I'm the prince, and I'm already there. Oh, okay. Just let me be that. Because Charlie, I'm, I love the, the yeah. loving kindness because what's more merciful than showing loving kindness? Mm -hmm. yeah. and what's more loving and kind than to loving show and mercy? Kind. Amen. And mercy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, again, dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. This has two meanings. One, and diff people differ sort of at odds with this one. Some said it really isn't about eternity. It's about your whole life here that you finish your life strong, loving the Lord and serving Him. But also, I think it is about eternity. I think it's both. Um, that we don't retire. Retirement. We retire from a vocation. But we do not retire from life. We do not retire from ministry. We don't retire from serving the King. We have, matter of fact, we have more discretionary time ever to serve the King at retirement. So uh, again, so the rest of our life, feel strong, be strong, and finish strong. And we're going to wear out, not rust out. <laughs> Amen? Especially here at Lakeview. That's what it's going to be. God's doing some great things. So here's the, the we'll close in prayer. One, in, in our coaches study, and I'm sure Joe already read this, because this is going to be the psalm we're going to use, but I think it's on day four of our study. The author, Mark Chalamine, a great guy of our study, he said, in Psalm 23, all of these names are cited in some way. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, our healer and restorer. Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Jehovah Siskinu, our righteousness. Jehovah Shama, is there. He is there. It's his presence. His presence. He is where we are and where we're going. Uh, Jehovah uh, Nissi, and I think it actually is Nissi, but our banner, he goes before us, his might. We, we go in his might, his strength before us. And then Jehovah Ra, our shepherd. Do you need a shepherd? Is he your shepherd? I, I ask us to pray that we really allow him to be at a level that we've never done that before. Okay? Is that a deal? Okay. Jimmy, would you close this prayer, please? Our Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you so much for all that you provided for us, Father. <coughs> Father, take with us each day that the what you're trying to tell us here in the Psalms, Father, that you are the provider, Father, that you that you are the good shepherd, that you will that you provide all that we'll need to keep us comfortable. Father, there's so many more things out there in the world that, the, that we ask for, but Father, we know that you provide all that we, we, we truly need. Father, we ask that you go with each of these as they go about their week, Father, and take this uh, lesson with them, Father, and uh, keep them comfortable throughout the week until they return this week. Father, we ask this all in your son's name. Amen. Ready to break. God bless y'all.